Beautiful morning from day three here at the 2019 IAPA Expo at the Orange County Convention Center here in Orlando, Florida. We've had an absolutely amazing two days and make sure you check out both of the videos that we've uploaded here on Theme Park Worldwide. We've been to various different press releases, spoke with lots of different manufacturers and so much more. Uh, now today we're going to be heading round. We've still got uh, a couple of reveals to go to, starting off this morning with Whitewater. Uh, we're heading there straight away uh, to see what they're going to be sharing with us. Uh, along with that as well, we're going to be recording some interviews, um, going round to some of the other stands and of course there's so much more at this event than just the larger manufacturers. Uh, as we found out yesterday, uh, there was all sorts of coverage. I mean, we went to uh, like fountain shows, laser companies, uh, absolutely everything. So that's gonna to continue today, going to some more of the smaller companies uh, here at IAPA, uh, along with some of the larger ones that we've still uh, not had time to share in the videos. Uh, back with both Brett and Alex today. Uh, but yeah, uh, the final uh, of these longer videos here from IAPA 2019. So we're gonna make our way down towards Whitewater, uh, let's see what they're going to release for us uh, this morning in this reveal. So we made it over to the Whitewater booth and just thought I'd show you this model here. I mean, really impressive. Uh, this is the slide wheel and look at this. I mean, it actually spins round uh, and obviously you'll be inside there um, on a dinghy, on a boat, uh, going round uh, inside it as it spins. Uh, looks absolutely incredible. Of course, you imagine that structure uh, at any water park is going to be a focal point. Uh, and it's great just to see the overall setup with it here as well, uh, how it works in terms of, uh, of course, the landing pool down the bottom here um, to exit the water and then of course the rafts can go straight back up uh, on the conveyor and uh, round up to the top but uh, yeah it's really impressive uh, and love to see that more parks out there I know it is already out there but I want to see more yeah I mean it's something so colorful and so imaginative you're gonna see it from a distance when you walk into a park and it's just the scale of this attraction you're gonna get such a different ride experience each and every time you go on it too it's gonna get some real good guest throughputs on there because it's constantly moving it can continually send guests through and I think it's a wonderful concept I agree that I hope to really see more parks in the future there's another cool model just next door to here so we'll uh, have a look before the press conference begins. So this model here is really impressive. I mean, you look at all of the smaller details on this, uh, it's wonderful. And the great thing is over here in the corner, you can actually press these buttons uh, and of course it lights up uh, the different attractions in the park. So you can see the raft battle, for example, um, is over there on the left hand side. Um, it's just great to press them and actually see exactly uh, what everything is. But yeah, I really like this uh, booth just here. All of the smaller details. You look at the theming over at the back here as well on the uh, attraction just there really is wonderful right let's uh, get in position ready for the announcement good morning everyone welcome thank you for joining us at whitewater's press conference for i have 2019 uh, if you look back historically at whitewater without a doubt an attribute to their success is the people the people that they, that we've hired the culture that we've cultivated at whitewater uh, an extension of that philosophy goes to the partners that we work with. Um, uh, not with exclusion is certainly RCI, who we've had over a 10 year relationship with, started out as just a licensing deal back and forth, some of their technologies implemented with some of ours, as concluded in some of the uh, industry's greatest attractions, such as the Aqua Course out there as well. And today, happy to announce a furtherment of that uh, relationship, which is a worldwide licensing agreement with RCI for all of our adventure play products. So, to talk to you a bit more about that. I could introduce from RCI Adventures, John Weston. Hey, thank you, Nathan. Um, thank you. RCI is excited to be a part of this relationship. We really were looking to take the dry side of the business in the industry into the uh, raise it to the level that Whitewater has risen on the water side to by bringing together the destination series which is the evolution and the innovation of no boundaries and you'll see three different selections from the destination series with amphitheater monument and stadium and then taking on the adventure plan being able to bring that to our clients Whitewater's clients and future prospects globally so again, we'd like to thank Jeff and Paul and Nathan for this partnership and we look forward to uh, many years to come. 
So for those of you who don't know Mobaros, we are a safety company uh, foremost, but uh, we are also a technology company. So basically what we do is we take all those uh, paper checklists, all of those manuals, uh, risk assessments and whatever you have, and then we put it into a format where you can easily have that overview and make sure that everything is, is done up to the standard that you request for your, for your operation. For safety servicing on splash pads or water parks. Well, Four years ago, we started a process with NSF 50. NSF 50 does all of the standards for our water, for our filtration, disinfection, pretty much everything that you'd find in a mechanical room in a water park, in a water park environment, is that you can't just take what worked in playgrounds and put it in the water park because you've got all the water and chemicals, uh, you've got concerns about microbiology and all that kind of thing. So, uh, we're excited to announce that in June, a new standard was passed for NSF, which will be published in January. And LifeLore is the first surface that has been certified to this new standard. This new standard has, instead of just one testing criteria as the ASTM standard has, now has six testing criteria. And it's precisely so that you can actually have a surface which will hold up and last in an aquatic environment while also providing more safety. First off, we'll start right here in Florida. Uh, Solar Vortex is going to be coming to Adventure Island in Tampa Bay in spring of 2020. This is going to be America's first dual tailspin water slide. So it's going to feature a 630-foot ride course. It'll have lots of twists and dives and swoops. It'll also feature aqualucent technology, three distinct aqualucent sections on that slide, uh, as well as the, the dual, dual tailspin. So that's going to be a really fun attraction that's going to be opening up here this spring. And then next up in San Antonio, with the Yeah. Yeah, huh? So that, that slide is going to be, that slide is, is all about lots of fun and lots of colors, very dynamic family raft ride, which does so well for our guests. Our guests love those type of family attractions, so we're really excited about that. And then moving to San Antonio, uh, Aquatica San Antonio, spring of 2020, we're going to be bringing Tonga Twister, which is two body slides in itself, so two unique dynamic slides, each about 415 feet long. And what's really cool about these water slides is we're also featuring aqualucent technology. And we've worked really closely with Whitewater to really push the envelope of what aqualucent does by creating these really fun patterns and swirls where you can actually kind of mess with your head a little bit and have these really cool elements. So it feels like you're increasing your speed. It's gonna have this really cool Polynesian aquatic and vibe. So we're really excited about that. And if that's not enough, we're also gonna be piping in music into these two water slides as well to really amp up the energy. So I'm really excited about these two new attractions and I can't wait to splash with you all in 2020. Thank you. Mount Olympus, the family is here, is next to me. And what was really outstanding, what was happening in here was that there was a lot of clever people thinking of how can we place the rides and that. And then the, the two young ladies, the daughters, uh, Fofo and Maria. That's what Scotsy does. We have more water parks here than any other place in the world. And uh, I'm super excited about the slide wheel. The name is called Hercules. And it's a, we're a Greek themed water park resort and theme park resort. We have roller coasters, we have go-karts, all the above. I've been coming to IAPA since I was probably eight, nine years old. Uh, you know, it, it's funny you say attractions. In the word attractions is the word attract. And the important thing about attractions, they are meant to attract people. And I believe this ride, being revolutionary as it is, is not only going to attract people, but it's going to revolutionize our industry. Get it? Revolve? It actually spins. It should be the coolest, neatest ride. I know the one, I'm, I've never seen anything like this before, but back in 2017, it was the first time I saw this young man behind me. And I'm super excited to bring it to, to Mount Olympus in Wisconsin Dells. Thanks Great America's being the world's largest uh, water coaster for next year. Um, in Six Flags Rockford, Rockford, Illinois, we're doing a twin tailspin across uh, rain winter. 
Um, Six Flags Hurricane um, um, Harbor in Arlington is doing a triple slide complex at Six Flags Oklahoma Low Flow Wizard. Um, with Palace Entertainment, they've, um, we've been the proud recipients of five orders for them. We've just opened a new tailspin ride in Sydney, Australia, just last week. It's a big hit. Uh, Raging Waters Los Angeles is going to be putting an aqua drop flatline loop combo. Wet and Wild Emerald Point in North Carolina is putting an aqua drop flatline loop combo as well. Sandcastle in Pennsylvania is a bombs away uh, flatline loop. And Lake Compounds, Connecticut, a family raft, um, a family raft sawtooth manta ride, which is very exciting. So. Um, we're jumping over to Europe. Uh, there's Legoland Water Park at um, Garlandia Resort in Italy, Aqualand in uh, Moravia in Czechoslovakia. Um, there's a slide and splash in Portugal. And jumping over to our SEA and China regions, OCT Nang Nanjing, the Playa Maya Water Park in China, Sun Group Projects with Vietnam, Studio City, Macau Ocean Park, Hong Kong, uh, Aegean Bay Water Park in the Philippines and Vin Pearl, Vietnam. And what's not on this list, which I'll just throw in for good measure, is we're just about to uh, refloat the Carnival Paradise cruise ship in Singapore that's been through a full retrofit um, in dry dock. And we'll have a brand new Waterworks water park. And then we'll be going to, uh, and with Life Floor, exactly our partners. And then um, we're also in Finland. Um, uh, at present, building the new Mardi Gras uh, Carnival flagships that will be, uh, they're the ones we're announcing today with the Bolt roller coaster going on right beside our water park as well. So, thank you. That's a quick synopsis, and I'm going to pass this back to Paul. But in the last three years, this has really come together, and um, I'm pleased to announce that we broke ground just a few short months ago on Aquatar. Um, this is an enormous project we put in place in the lead up to the World Cup. Um, it features a land-based, complete water park um, complemented by a man-made island on the other side of a, a, a trellis whose major feature is a 230-foot tall, the world's tallest slide tower um, with um, a whole host of whitewater's largest features cantilevered off the side. Um, it is designed to look like an oil rig, an oil derrick, with full fire flare coming off the top and an acrylic walk the plank feature to a drop capsule 230 feet uh, above the ocean surface. Um, this, this is a testament to our creative teams. It's categorically a testament to our engineering team the engineering prowess that they bring to uh, to the industry, and um, rest assured, nothing will, build, will be built similar to this, um, certainly at least in the very, very near future. It's something we're very much looking forward to, and, uh, and it's one we're already very, very proud of. Well, I must say, that was absolutely excellent and really well put together. Uh, the environment there, here at the booth, uh, for that reveal was fantastic. Incredible. Um, in an actual conference room, uh, it, it was wonderful. We could hear everything. We had the screen, uh, some wonderful visuals, and some great announcements from all sorts there, wasn't fantastic. it? Fantastic. Across the world, North America, yeah. Europe, Asia, and of course, a very, very good groundbreaking announcement. I think it's the first one to really start with, uh, Qatar as well, which is uh, an announcement we've waited a long time for. Structure Incredible. that looks amazing. Lots of White Waters products um, actually being built onto that, and the broke ground on it, which is great. Of course, other notable announcements there. There's more information about the uh, attractions coming to SeaWorld Parks um, out there, which is really interesting, especially Adventure Island down in Tampa, uh, and also the SeaWorld Parks as well. Um, in terms of safety, uh, something that I found really interesting was um, that the, the, the gallery was talking about the flooring. Yes, and yeah. I thought that was re something really interesting. To revolutionise the use of flooring uh, in water park attractions across the globe. To take away hard flooring and offer soft flooring across every water park, even pathways, walkways, seating areas, just to offer that little bit of safety and reassurance to, to uh, guests that visit that their, their safety is number one priority. And that seems something that was a rolling theme. Also listening to the gentleman who uh, was one of the founders of Mabaro, a technology that's very useful for uh, 
activated safety standards and safety checks at theme park, both the staff and the engineering teams. Everything seemed to be a number one priority in the terms of safety, and that is uh, critical. And I think it's really nice to see the companies all working together and delivering such a great product uh, for them. So well put together with, between all the announcements there. So much going on. It's one of the longest press announcements. I would say it was the most professional one that we've attended here. Uh, very well conducted. So thanks to the guys at White Water for having us down. Also, uh, Mount Olympus, I wasn't quite expecting that there. Of course, the family from the park, uh, I've never been there yet. It's definitely on the list for the future. Hercules, um, a brand new slide yeah, wheel. That, that was great. It looks fantastic. Uh, the owner of the park actually being here too, talking about his IAPA journey. Obviously, IAPA is a many celebrated to uh, managing directors from over the years at this park. And he talks about his legacy and what he's cemented here at the event. And he said it's nice to continue that legacy with the White Water relationship. Of course, considering all the safety features too. Fantastic announcement there by White Water. Yeah, brilliant. Really enjoyed that. One of my favourites of the three days. Uh, and of course, this is just the beginning of uh, day three for us here at the IAPA Expo. So let's continue and take a little walk around. So next up, we're over here at Mondale just to have a little look at some of these models here, including this prototype uh, for Surf's Up. Uh, and this is fantastic. Um, as you can see, um, each of the individual gondolas uh, will come out to the side. Um, the gentleman here is actually controlling this at the moment so we can see um, what it's like. Uh, but in terms of looking at it, quite a high throughput attraction. Uh, this isn't out at a park at the moment, but hopefully we'll see it uh, out there at some point in the future. I'm a huge fan of their rides, of course, if you're familiar with the top scan, uh, that's done by these guys, some very intense rides. Uh, just over here we've got the Escape, uh, and I look forward to seeing this out there at some point in the future. Put you down to uh, eye level here just so you can see that in detail. Fantastic rides. I mean, comment down below and let me know um, your favorite flat rides out there from these guys, because in my opinion, they do some of the best. Really interested to know um, your thoughts on that. And these models, fantastic. Great to see them working uh, over here at Mondale. There we go, the world of rides since 1979. Just over at the Weber Group now, and just thought I'd show you this here. I mean, these guys are responsible for a lot of theming. Something that we experienced earlier this year at Carowinds was Copperhead Strike, uh, the new Mac rides to a launch coaster. Uh, and as you can see, this company uh, has had a huge part in that. Uh, brilliant theming, very high quality, and of course, a fantastic photo opportunity. Uh, but as you can see here from their uh, portfolio, they've done lots of things out there, and some of you may find uh, quite a lot of these very familiar. So next up, we're over at Triotech. I uh, just thought I'd show you this awesome model here from Ninjago the Ride. Uh, now this company are all about the system uh, that you actually use on Ninjago. Uh, of course, you can see it's actually built into the lap bar restraint system. Uh, and instead of having a gun to shoot interactives with on the ride and screens, um, you, you, you know, you actually move your arms. Uh, something very interesting. I mean, they do all sorts, of course. You can still get the standard uh, system here that you'd see on a lot of rides as well. Yeah, I just thought I'd show you that model with it being awesome. Uh, from Ninjago and something that's uh, very familiar with a lot of people from the Legoland parks. Interesting, you can see the raft just here as well. Have a little look at their seating design there as well, the dynamic seat theatre. Uh, of course, you can see like the uh, their air that would come out of the bottom there, like a leg tickle effect, uh, the moving seats, and uh, so much more. Yeah, that's Triotech, and as we can see, they've got some of their portfolio on the screens at the back. It's a really nicely presented booth. Loving the fire here at the Orlando Special Effects Company. Really like that, of course. Moving very quickly along the side there. Can be programmed to different lighting sequences and music. Fantastic. Got the animatronic to see here as well. Got some really nice moving to him on the arms just here, playing that guitar. So the plan is that we're going to have a walk down some of the middle aisles just here. Um, we've pretty much covered a lot of the major things now that we wanted to. We've seen some of the smaller companies. We've been outside. We've been on the rides. It's more just making sure that we've seen everything really, tying some loose ends and just making sure that we've covered everything really. I mean, there's still a few more manufacturers that I know that we have had a look at, but I've not shared yet with you guys. So we're gonna sort of go back to those, share them with you for the first time. And uh, yeah, continue with day number three, our final day here at the IAPA Expo 2019.
I've also just had a chat with the guys over at Dynamic Attractions as well. Um, they were very interesting. There was nothing to really show you over there uh, in terms of models or ride vehicles or anything like that. Uh, but great to have a chat with them. They've done some fantastic rides out there, such as Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey at the Universal Parks and uh, many more. Over at Realistic Dinosaur Statues now, just to show you some of these animatronics just here. Some little seats on the top as well. I mean, this one's the same down here. It's got a little uh, area to sit on the top and a control panel. Let's have a close look at this one over here. Can't say I've seen them with a seat on the top before. Something very, very different. It's got a seat belt on there as well. Maybe it's for more um, like actors to sit on in more of a themed environment. Maybe a, a, a theme park area where they want to do some sort of interactive show. Yeah, yeah some quite nice movement on that. So we're over here at Oceaneering now to have a look at some of their dark ride systems. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of their rides actually. You know me, I love a good this dark ride. And we've got some awesome uh, models to have a look at here as well that are on display. Really nicely presented booth, very professional with all the seating here uh, and all these different models in the cabinets. Of course, this is a motion-based ride, so um, th this would run like a trackless system. Uh, and then you've got the top uh, that would actually move and can rotate and uh, all sorts of special effects that can be uh, used there. Fantastic, isn't it, Brad? Yeah, it's really good. Especially being in Orlando, this looks like the same vehicle from Empire of the Penguins. At, uh, at Seawall the Lango, but um, yeah, there you go. I mean, you look at the actual uh, system to it. I mean, the, the great rides these, the great thing is all the interaction. You can have uh, maybe three of these ride vehicles interacting with each other and spinning round. Of course, all depends on the clients, um, as in the parks that are out there buying these from the manufacturers. Uh, but Oceaneering do some really good stuff. We'll have a look at this uh, final model just over here as well. Of course, you can see on the screen there some more of their portfolio. Yeah, it really is great to see. Really appreciate the models. It's got to be one of the most professionally done booths. I yeah, would say. I, I, I'd it's say clean, so. Isn't it? Yeah. Fantastic. What have we got just over here? Just lit up over there. Very interesting. Looks like some sort of transit system. It's got the wheels at the bottom just there. No signage with that, unfortunately, but it does look like some sort of transit system there, doesn't it? Different. I can't quite identify what I've put that mm, to, really. I think we'll, uh, we'll ask the guys uh, here at this booth and we'll, uh, we'll find out and let you know. So we found out just over at Oceaneering, uh, that's a transport ride. So it's a park that want to transport guests around, um, not so much in a, a dark ride, more just around the park in general, like from the parking lot to the entrance uh, and that sort of style. Um, yes, yeah, certainly very unique. And of course, uh, the doors would open up um, at the side, allowing numerous people to enter. I uh, mean, that could be quite a high throughput way of transporting guests around the parks. So we've got Big Sky Miniature Golf Construction over here. Uh, of course, lots of different mini golfs all around the world. Orlando has got so many of them. And there's quite a few miniature golf companies here at IAPA 2019. Uh, I just thought I'd show you this because I really like the side, uh, especially of this hole just here with all the rocks around. I think it looks a lot more realistic and can fit in uh, with the terrain and um, bits of theming that you want to add around the holes. Uh, that's a big thing for me. It's all about the full experience. Uh, a lot of the time you'll see just like concrete or wood around the side of the holes. Um, but yeah, it's really nice to see they've got the side all themed. Quite like in the cannon, uh, the snail, and the gingerbread man there as well. Over here then now at Ride Engineers Switzerland. Uh, this is the company that are actually building the new Rapids ride for Silver Dollar City that's going to be opening in 2020. Uh, really looking forward to this. It's actually got the uh, tallest drop um, on a Rapids ride in the world. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, this attraction when it's all put together. Uh, we've mentioned this in the other vlogs that we've done from IAPA. Uh, but the great thing is you can come to all the different booths uh, and get a lot of different uh, catalogues and magazines to read through. And especially if you want to get into the theme park industry in terms of working for manufacturers it's all about networking and uh, you pick up some really nice things as well like this to take away with you uh, but yeah, in terms of the rapids uh, really looking forward to hearing more about this and uh, the concept art for it looks great uh, in terms of ride engineers switzerland they've done various of the rides as well as we can see uh, over at the back there and uh, you've got all sorts of concept art you've got that new ride that opened at uh, schwaben park uh, i think that's how you pronounce it uh, earlier this year down at the bottom and that won a european star award 
record for Europe's best new coasters of 2019. So we're now over at the TAA group and these guys have put together theming for many different projects at theme parks, water parks and so much more. And there's a lot of very familiar projects that of course we've covered here on Theme Park Worldwide that these guys have done. Um, you've got IMG World there over at Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. Um, amazing quality theme that these guys produce. And if you watch the vlogs that I've done from a lot of these places that I'm mentioning now, you'll know that I've always said the guys that do the theming have done an amazing amazing job. Park Asterix, I was there earlier this year uh, and got to ride there, They've had beautifully themed um, Zamperla Disco. All up the side here, of course, you've got the structure behind it. Uh, and then these guys have put all that theme in on the side. Uh, the Heider Park Hotel there in Germany um, with all of the facade and of course, you've got the car the front there. Plopsaland de Pan in Belgium, uh, a part that I've been to again a couple of times and all of the entrance area there and the uh, various different buildings. They've done work for Merlin Entertainment, the sea life parks as we move around to this side here uh, some more parks that of course we've covered on the channel um, such as Mirabellandia in Italy uh, where they've done Master Thai uh, and the theming all around the coast are there Move a little bit higher up, Tovaland. Of course, they had a huge expansion um, with Avalon and Port Laguna, a new entrance area uh, and also a themed area with a Mack rides, boat ride, and also a coaster, uh, the BM Wing Coaster Phoenix. They were responsible for the theming all around there. They've also done the Tomorrowland Festival stage in Belgium. Uh, I mean, Tomorrowland is an absolutely huge festival and the quality of the theming on that for a stage, um, bear in mind that was just for an event, um, is absolutely crazy. Just underneath here, Legoland Dubai, um, all of the entrance there, another part we've covered on the channel, um, along with the Ferrari ride also at uh, Ferrari World at Abu Dhabi. So again, if we move around the corner here to see some more of the work here from these guys, um, you'll see some more recognizable names. Um, starting off down the bottom just here uh, with Plopsaland, that gorgeous castle uh, with the teacups ride just next to it. More here from Plopsaland there with the Maya Land area and IMG World, uh, also over in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. Towards the top, Europa Park, um, with Arthur in the Minimoy's Kingdom, the Mack Rides coaster, uh, beautifully themed both indoors and outdoors there um, with that ride. Honestly, it's great to chat with these guys, and the fact we actually came over to them uh, and they knew of us uh, before we even mentioned it was, was even better. Really special to me to, to meet these guys that have done some of my favorite theming projects ever. On this channel, uh, of course, we are roller coaster enthusiasts, but we love um, the theme parks out there. I'd definitely call us more into our theming than we are the coasters. We, we enjoy both, we really do. It's important for me to have a nice mix, but uh, these guys do some fantastic stuff. They've also done a small part of work with Rulantico at Europa Park, some of the lampposts there, uh, and also did some work in the, with the Italy there as well with the uh, theatre facade. But uh, yeah, it's the TAA group, uh, brilliant to meet these guys and really love their work. Right then, so we've made our way over to Skyline Attractions just to have a look at some of these awesome models just here. I'm um, also going to ask for a demonstration in a moment so we can see them in action. Uh, but this is the Skywarp Orbit model. And uh, yeah, something very, very different what these guys are doing. Uh, what we'll do, we'll bring the camera around this way and move it a little bit lower. Um, just so you can see the perspective of how this will be in a park. You can have a couple of small flat rides in the middle. You can have your queue line here. Um, or a bit like an entrance feature um, with an archway over there as well. Um, but yeah, very, very compact. That's the great thing with what uh, Skyline Attractions do. Um, they are compact rides. And of course, they can fit uh, in various different locations at your park. We've got the Skywarp Horizon over here. It's a figure of eight layout. And of course, you've got the um, inversion there in the middle as well. Uh, and again, you know, if, if this is a park uh, for you, then you could of course put uh, like a drop tower or something in the middle of that there for the interaction. Um, you know, it, it's all that sort of stuff what I like to look at with this. Uh, again, put you down here towards um, eye level, um, how you'd be walking into this area. There's just so much space around. In terms of the design for this, um, of course, you, you've got uh, two uh, trains on this, two loading areas and unload areas, one at the left and one at the right. Uh, we've been chatting with the guys, you can actually just have uh, one if you did want to. However, especially with the design of these, um, really, uh, you do want the two for the whole interaction um, over there in the middle. So here you can see the Skywarp Horizon in action. Gives you a really good idea on the interaction there in the middle with the inversion and the hill going over the top. Fantastic. 
and here's the Skywarp Orbit in action here as well. Again, you've got the loading and unload area on both of the sides. On this model, you've got a queue line in the middle, and of course, that really builds up the anticipation waiting to ride. Uh, you can stand there and, of course, see the coaster uh, running right around over you. So here's the Skywarp model in action. I'd say this is probably my favorite, actually, in terms of the uh, height of it. Uh, around 60 feet with these, uh, in terms of the height. Um, yeah, you just look at how it flows really nicely and that interaction passing each other here. Um, absolutely awesome. We've got one more model just to look at over here as well. So let's uh, take a look. So finally, we've got the Skywarp Eclipse just here to look at. Very interesting design, especially at the top here. Again, you've got two trains uh, making the way round. Uh, and then of course you've got the inversions at the top with a really nice interaction part there. Absolutely fantastic. And again, with the small footprint of this, uh, it's an easy installation for a park that's really struggling for space. You can put something like this in and uh, yeah, not really take up much footprint. Thank you very much. A huge thank you to Skyline Attractions for showing us all the different models there in action. And what really shines through from their designs is the small footprint of those. You can put uh, other rides in between them and have some really nice interaction. And uh, I think that's a, a big plus point to their rides. Uh, now, in terms of Rocky Mountain construction, yes, we covered them with the big reveal of the Iron Gwazi train um, over in our day one vlog. So check that out if you've not seen it. We've also just filmed an interview with Scott uh, from RMC um, talking all about Iron Gwazi and various other projects uh, that they've done as well uh, and that is also online in a separate video here on theme park worldwide um, so make sure you check it out let's continue taking a walk down the middle here see some more of the booths here at IAPA 2019 so next up we're over at Poma to take a look around their booth of course they're well known for their gondola systems transportation is a very important part of not just theme parks uh, but also attractions as well uh, i mean i look straight down the bottom here and see the uh, roosevelt island tramway there um, in new york i've actually been on there it's very famous as well because it's been the uh, uh, the area what the views has set before uh, for various different films uh, but of course uh, the new metro systems uh, this is at miami international airport as we can see there uh, and this is some of their older uh, models you can see here as well with Skytrack, the more traditional style of the gondola system you can see there, or as we would call them, um, a Skyride. Yeah, that's a little look at the booth for Poma. Just I'd show you these go-karts over at J&J &J Amusements. I mean, they're one of the older attractions at amusement parks and of course the standalone attractions as well, especially in places like Orlando with indoor and outdoor go-kart tracks. Uh, yeah, just looking at those there, uh, they look awesome, don't they? I mean, the designs on them, all the colors, uh, they've really come a long way, go-karts, in terms of the design and of course, safety as well with the, um, like the seat belt systems on them. We'll look there down towards Zamperla, Pro Slide, so much to see, there really is. But somewhere that we've not really had a look around is uh, Doppelmayr. This is the company that have actually produced the Disney Skyliner um, over at Walt Disney World that opened earlier this year. Of course, they don't just do gondola style systems. Uh, they do some other bits as well, like we can see over at the side there with the uh, bicycle. I must say, I do like their booth with the uh, huge inflatable uh, gondola up at the uh, top there as well. Looks great. They've also got transport things too. I mean, they, they do like indoor metro system in Menlo in the Netherlands. They're showing it on the screen. I was just going to talk about the little skylines. They've got such a really good transport network. And the thing is, like, a lot of people forget about transport in, in parks and not just in parks, in leisure as a whole. It's so important, but this design of a gondola for a sky ride complex absolutely wonderful, really innovative. You've got to think as well, it's more away from theme parks, isn't I it? Agree. It's more just ski resorts and getting people um, from one place to another with convenience, and sometimes that means height, distance, or just experience. You'll be able to see the ground below. It's very important. It's good to see that the market is still revolutionizing itself and uh, developing new investment. Yeah, definitely. I mean, of course, we had a look at Poma earlier on. These are very different in terms of the, uh, uh, the design of those. I'm walking down this way, see some more manufacturers. He has Waterworld there in Abu Dhabi, been there. Brilliant park, of course, you've got the roller soaker up the top there as well. Center edge software, it's like trampoline parks, play equipment. So much in terms of games here, there really is. If you love arcades, I said this yesterday, but if you love arcade machines and um, all that sort of stuff, then yeah, you'd love this event too. It's not just restricted to those who love theme parks and amusement parks, it's the leisure industry as a whole. Hi, I am Franz Harari. This is 
my booth here at IAPA for Entourage Productions. We produce illusion shows, magic shows, and all day we're here at this convention floor doing that. But better than that, let me show you what it is. I'm gonna take the camera, I'm gonna shoot this for you, and we are up. I am Franz Ferrari and I'm here with Sean and we're live at IAPA. That was absolutely awesome. The pleasure was all mine and we'll be back with more magic. We will indeed. So we're back over at Great Coasters International now. Just to show you this on the wall, I mean, it makes you very proud to be a UK theme park enthusiast and see Wicker Man from the part that started it all for me really, Alton Towers, a part that I was very passionate uh, about when I was a kid. I worked there for eight years. And of course, they finally got the wooden coaster that um, you know everybody wanted there. And yeah, it's just great to see it represented on this wall. There two weeks ago, freezing cold temperatures at night time, riding this beautiful wooden roller coaster. And it's so nice to see it celebrated with the manufacturer on a big scale here at IAPA in Orlando, it's so special. It's great because it's not the longest, in fact, it's one of the shortest. It it's not the shortest. fastest, it's not the tallest, but it experience. looks brilliant as an experience. It's a beautiful uh, statue figure, of course, the pre-show and everything. It really does make a roller coaster to me in this modern day. What is a great roller coaster? Everyone's opinion is different, that's what I love about it. Some people don't need high drops or many inversions or plenty of airtime. People just need a good theme experience. And Wicker Man, I think, offers such a unique package for everybody all over the world. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just great. I mean, the, the size of that is incredible. I mean, you look at it, for example, to the train just next door here, it's huge. It's the biggest um, picture on display that I've probably seen here at the event, to be honest. And it's Wicker Man from Alton Towers back in the UK, our local park. Makes me proud seeing that out there. Uh, it really does. It's nice. Really nice to see it represented, along with quite a few other uh, British rides that we've seen on other stands as well. Just have a chat then with the guys over at GCI where we filmed an interview up there. Uh, so if you do want to see that with Great Coasters International, again, it is online here on Theme Park Worldwide uh, as a separate video where you can catch that. So we'd show you these uh, land trains just here. We focus quite a lot on transportation and it is a big part of uh, visiting the parks. Look at this over here. This is very cool, isn't it? Like a VR experience. Hologate. Under two seconds behind the leader. This looks awesome. So they're all in some sort of competition you've got all the um, steering on there it looks like quite a, uh, a rickety action-packed experience I mean yeah look at that it's quite intense isn't it? Austin holding third place strong two seconds behind the race leader as we have 43 seconds left in the race lap three of three and it's gonna be a battle for third now Maybe I love it you got bungee trampolines over there more VR experiences more Christmas more mini golf obviously Brett loves his uh, loves his golf and you've got lighting, something we haven't really touched on over the past three days, but lighting is absolutely huge. Uh, of course, especially with traveling um, rides, you know, and of course you've got uh, this company here that have uh, got all their lights on show um, for us to see here. So we've made our way over to Cutting Edge now, because these boys are about to have a go throwing some axes. So are you ready? Never done it before, excited. Yeah. I can't wait. Let's see if one of them can actually get this it to be, stick This could look back. really good or it could be an epic fail. We'll see what happens no matter what, it's made it in the vlog. So uh, we're on. Uh, there you go, let's see you in action. So they're having the prep talk now on how to do this and throw the axe. There's a reason why I'm back here filming and <laughs> Alex and Brett are doing this one. Brett 
Jack looks like he's going to be taking this very seriously. He's ready for this. He's a professional golfer. Come on, he can uh, he can throw an axe. Here we go. Brett's up first. What was? The... He didn't even hit the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Surely Alex can do better than that. What was that, Brad? That was embarrassing. <laughs> and now over 200,000 people have seen that. Yeah. <laughs> I think they need a new technique. Round two coming up. Here we go. Pressure's on for Brett in a minute. I want something spectacular. Wow. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Oh, that was good. A little harder. I've got it now. I've got it I think Brett's the champion for this one. Come on, Brett, do something spectacular. Spectacularly bad. Well, you tried. We gave it our best shot. Brett, don't leave it Well done by having a go. You gave it a try. It's something different as well, isn't it? Get me out of it. <laughs> There's so many inflatables around here. There's like three aisles worth. It is crazy to see them all. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, you've got palm trees, you've got slides. We've even just seen an inflatable like laser tag arena. Of course, you could use that also for like a scare attraction or walkthrough. Uh, fantastic, it really is. I've seen this town hall over here. How awesome is that? Brett's uh, found this pool table that he quite like as well. I mean, look at that. He's having a little... Uh... Hey, Brett, hope you're better at that than the... Uh... Throwing them just. Well, this is cool because it goes to your pool apparently too, so you can play while you're swimming around. Oh wow. You got this, you give it a hit. I can kind of hit it in. There you go. I've never seen anything like that before. Pretty unique, to be honest with you. That's awesome, and yeah, obviously the balls go into the uh, into the bottoms here. That, that's yeah, brilliant. Lots oh. of stuff to see. Oh, I love that. What a great idea. And here's a look inside the town hall. You've got all the cell blocks over at the back there. Crazy. It's a huge structure. I mean, it's great how it's all inflatable. You can just take it about, put it in the back of a van, and you can be on your way. I love it. So I've made a new friend over here at Florida Flurries. We're back outside then now. Uh, just come and take a look. Uh, I've just been chatting to the guys here at this booth. Amazing, just seeing how it all works with the system. I feel like I'm going to get hit by a, nice, a, a snowball if I stay around here. Uh, yeah, it looks absolutely awesome. The fact you've got um, yeah, the big snow battles here in Florida. Like, the fact you've got all the system putting this together, you're not going to hit me with that, are you? No, no. Uh, all right, yeah, I hope not. Look at your present. There you go. There we go. Ah, nice snowball. snowball. I'm not, oh, it's really cold. <laughs> it is cold, yeah. Just no, no, little, don't, don't. Give a little rubble on the side. I'm not, I'm not going to chuck it out, but uh, there's been a hit event. But uh, there you go. Normally I would. Uh, but yeah, I must say, you know, how awesome is this? I was just chatting with the guy uh, who puts it all together here. Oh, you do. It's snowing. Uh, Florida, a rare occurrence. The guy who puts it all together, it's the first of these snow machines in the US. Wow, that's really, really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's something different, isn't we're it? We're getting attacked by children. Yeah, I think we need to move quick. We're going to move. Gonna gonna, uh, yeah, get covered We're not the kids we used to be, Sean. Let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Florida Flurries, realsnowmachines.com. Love it, awesome. I absolutely love these. How awesome. So simple, so effective. I've seen them done many times before, but still find them fascinating. Literally, just the inflate up from the bottom there, you got all the motor at the bottom, plug it in and off you go, but I do like them. I remember when uh, Alton Towers, our local park back in the UK, uh, we used to use those at Halloween. Awesome. So we're over here at Foam Daddy, and have a little look at this in action. I love it. <laughs> Making the most of the foam. I mean, this is absolutely incredible. How tempting it is to actually just go and jump in there right now with the foam, right? Like, Honestly, how, how timed it is, it looks amazing, doesn't it? I love it. Yeah, fantastic to see in action. That's Foam Daddy here in the outdoor section of IAFA 2019. I love it. So we're still here at Foam Daddy, and the guys were like, do you want to come in? 
So, Alex is somewhere in there. I'm here. <laughs> Foam Daddy! Foam Daddy, we love it. That is incredible. Oh, I'm loving him in there. Oh, you, he, honestly, you're up for anything, aren't you? I, I think I'll pass on a hug now. But, I mean, yeah. imagine being in like, like a late night rave in this, I mean, or, or cloudy. Like right, all lights going around, lasers. Incredible. Right, I'll, I'll see you later. See you later. Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of my alpha. See ya. <laughs> I am loving some of the outdoor exhibits. Fantastic. The fact you've got the snow machines and then of course as you saw just um, with the foam as well. Uh, anyway, it's coming towards the end of day number three and our final day here at IAPA 2019. What an absolutely amazing three days it's been and we'll reflect on that a little bit more uh, in a few minutes when we come towards the end of the video. Uh, but anyway, still a few more booths. I'm just going to look around uh, towards the right hand side now of the indoor uh, main exhibition hall. Uh, so come and join me to have a little walk through as we come towards the end of our journey at IAPA 2019. So another one of my favourite manufacturers, especially for flat rides, is Technical Park. They do coasters, ferris wheels and various other models. Uh, but you can see they're represented here at IAPA with a booth and uh, some of the portfolio was just there on the wall. We've got bowling companies just over here. Honestly, you could do seven videos the length that I have from this trip and uh, still not cover it all. Honestly, uh, there's so much going on, there really is. Assesso, they're all into uh, ticketing, theme parks and uh, all that kind of stuff, admission. Uh, in fact, the Million Entertainment um, do actually use Assesso now. They used to run um, another system and then they brought uh, Assesso in um, and to run their uh, ticketing system. So certainly a company um, that I know quite familiar with from working on the turnstiles at uh, Alton Towers. Over to a manufacturer now that I really struggle to pronounce, but I'm going to give it an attempt. Martin and Vlennik, uh, or something along those lines. Honestly, I'm terrible with pronunciation, but they've got some awesome models over here. Uh, you can see one of their wooden coasters under construction here. Um, a lot of their rides over in Asia, uh, especially China, where you can see quite a lot of them. Uh, but this is a great model. I really like the uh, forklift truck down the bottom here as well. The shipping containers, all the wood packaged up uh, for the lift hill there. We're going to look at a complete model over on this side. It's like an out and back coaster layout from those guys. So you've got the specifications down here at the bottom. Speed of 48 miles an hour, 2,915 feet of track on Fireball, this out and back style wooden roller coaster. Let's go and have a look at these over here because these look quite cool. Love how they're getting into the festive season. Let's uh, get them going, shall we? Press the button. And there we go. Oh, I love these. They've also got some uh, snowmen over there and penguins. What oh, a really nice way of attracting people over to their booth. I love it. So yesterday we went on quite a few different rides here at IAPA and I just thought I'd bring you over to this other booth now uh, for Moses Rides and they've done quite a few of their attractions actually uh, especially their junior uh, rides, which the drop towers and uh, yeah, you've got one of those here again uh, it's all sitting there waiting for people to have a look at and uh, test out uh, but yeah, it's great how they've brought a ride along I mean, really appreciate the fact these manufacturers go to town to um, showcase their attractions and of course you can see their portfolio at the back there as well with all different rides on uh, those guys make uh, they've done quite a lot actually it's surprising I mean you look at their uh, portfolio of attractions uh, they've done some brilliant things out there more from the ticketing systems and transportation it's all about making sure that we've covered all the major things now walking around making sure that it's all uh, all finished for us you know before we wrap up uh, and what an amazing journey it's been if you've watched all three of the videos Thanks for your support, and I'm sure we'll be uh, coming to an IAPA Expo again at some point in the future. Definitely. Right. 
So we're over at Smash now, and I thought I'd show you this absolutely awesome concept. It's called the Finger Coaster. And how this works is literally you draw on this screen here the layout of your coaster, and then it magically turns it into a realistic layout, and then you ride it. So that's why they're having a very rough ride. Someone's literally gone along there and done this. As you can see, it's set there. There you go, look. Did you see them demonstrating it? What an awesome idea. There we go, it says thinking dot dot dot, puts it all together, and then they ride it. So it's instant using virtual reality. Like, how cool is that? That's the finger coaster, how amazing. That's some brilliant technology. I've really never seen anything quite like that before. I mean, the fact it's instant as well. I've seen it where you have to design coasters um, and then you can ride them. I've seen that done at uh, Disney parks, for example, but oh, the fact that with this, it's so quick, it's instant. You literally use your finger, you draw the coaster and off you go and you can change the layout mid-ride. That is amazing technology. How cool. Some more awesome technology here over at Paradrop VR. So you can see on the screen over there exactly what uh, she's seeing up there, but that is awesome. So it's moving on that system up at the back. And you're paragliding, again using VR. I mean, for me, virtual reality, this is what it should be used for. On roller coasters, I'm not a huge fan at all. Um, however, with this, I love it. We've seen so much to do with VR here, but it's good to hear that it's moving away um, from roller coasters now, more to these standalone attractions, because uh, I feel like this is the future, it really is. Absolutely fantastic. And that's so uh, Paradrop VR. It was quite an intense experience. There's so many of these I would love to have tried, but we've just not had the time. It's crazy. So we're over at Comeback now, the amusement engineers, just to have a little look at what they've got on offer here at IAPA. Uh, now, I spoke about Comeback quite a lot in some of the vlogs on our YouTube channel, especially at Porta Ventura in Spain. And as you can see over at the side here, um, you've got Stampeda, which is their twin track racing coaster uh, that we can see here. Uh, it did actually open um, with different trains. However, Comeback uh, put the new trains on Stampeda. Uh, as we can see there, uh, they are featured here in their portfolio. I've just been chatting with the guys here as well. They've actually been doing some work um, on the SLCs at the moment. Of course, they are built by Vacoma. Uh, but what you can see here is their new type of um, restraint system and train um, for the Vacoma suspended looping coaster. Uh, and as you can see, it looks very different. I mean, it's much more open um, than, than the previous ones. I mean, we're talking about the old older uh, Vacoma SLCs. Uh, and of course, the restraints are very bulky. I mean, you look at the likes of Infusion at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Um, you know, it, it's not a very comfortable ride, mainly due to the design of the trains. Whereas with this, what Comeback have done uh, is completely freshened it up. And yes, Vacoma do a, a newer version now of their restraints. Uh, however, it's good to see here another manufacturer have tried something different and obviously thought, yeah, Vacoma, you know, they need to work on their uh, restraints and they've come in and they give them a bit of competition, which, you know, is, is great really and there's a couple of these out there um, at parks and yeah it's really interesting to see this here at the uh, comeback stand so there we go it's come to the end of our visit to IAPA 2019 where we've had an absolutely awesome time haven't we boys amazing, oh, amazing. it has been epic of course we go back to day one me and Brett um, you know we saw so much the big ride reveals was a big yeah. part of it wasn't it uh, I mean, what has been your favourite booth standout moment? Would you say? Um, standout booth's got to be intimate, not yes. for like a moment. Just how they approach everything, have the two trains out there, and it seems like they go above and beyond for the clients and stuff. Yeah. But in terms of the standout moment, would be um, the water park reveal today was fantastic. It was very the slides, yeah. Seeing what they're doing in Qatar and all what, the, how much money they're putting in, and some of the slide complexes are crazy. Some and it was big extremely stuff. professional, so that was cool to be in, like a press conference instead of like a reveal. It's something a little bit different for the rest of the week, but honestly, it's hard to put really a, a thing on any highlight because it's all just flowed together. So thank you so much for yeah, coming and being a part no, of it, Brett. I really Thanks appreciate it. Brett has got a lot of roller coaster knowledge. Like this yeah. guy knows a lot of stuff. In fact, we call him the roller coaster data, Brett. We, yeah. I mean, we've said it in videos before, um, but honestly, this guy, uh, thank you so much for being here. It's like, been really amazing. appreciate Couldn't it. Done it like you guys, um, Alex has been great. It's been great. Of course, Alex came to join us on day two of uh, the event. It was me and Brett that, that sort of started it all. Then Alex joined us um, on, on day two. I mean, have you got a favorite booth and a, a, a moment that really do, do means know, a lot? Do you know, to pick pick one, I think would be unfair to all the other amazing moments we've had. We've seen yeah. so much, we've opened our eyes so much. Sean and I have talked about this for many years. There's been many long, sleepless hours Sean and I have spent together who, yeah. on trips, traveling abroad, spending time planning trips and just getting to know each other as friends like we have for so many years now. 
and to be here at this event which we've talked about for so long, seeing it all with our own eyes and giving our own opinions on it for me has been a roller coaster, a, a, a motion of adventures. Yeah. It's just been everything I've asked for and more and you know this event is so special and even if you're not into the parks as much as we are or as dedicated as we are I still feel like you should attend this event it's wonderful it's accessible and it's fun definitely come and experience IAPA fun is the key word definitely well uh, yeah thanks a lot for all that yeah it's uh, it, it really is very true and there's so much um, here at IAPA than just coming for roller coasters that there is a full array of experiences on offer whether it's things like arcade machines food inflatables foam machines <laughs> you know no matter what it is oh, there is something for everyone at this event um, for me in terms of a standout moment and um, that I've really enjoyed um, it has been meeting the manufacturers for me I mean these people have been my idols for a very long time and they've built some of these extreme machines that I have loved for a very long time and to actually chat with them uh, and be a part of the experience and uh, it, it, that's been it for me. It's been absolutely incredible. We've made so many great contacts. Just want to say a big thank you to IAPA, of course, for having us down here um, for this. We really appreciate it. We've had press access, um, what they provided for us to come down here. So a big thank you to those. Um, and also everyone here um, who we've spoken to, um, all the people that have looked after us at booths. Um, honestly, we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, all three of us are very, very grateful. Um, we're you. really hoping to come back uh, to IAPA in the future. Um, a lot of you may be aware that um, the European IAPA Expo is coming to London next year. Of course, with it being our home country, um, we're going to be there, of course, um, in London. And I hope to come out here and then come and experience uh, IAPA in Orlando again at some point in the future. Thanks a lot, boys. Thank it's been guys. incredible. And uh, yeah, of course, big thank you to all of you for watching our content. Go back and check out our other two videos that we've filmed. And along with that, there's some special interviews as well. So uh, thank you very much for joining us on this journey here at the IAPA Expo 2019. And this is time to cue those credits. See you all again soon.